Rivals of Ether feels like competitive Smash Brothers, but done way better. That comparison's not going away anytime soon. In fact, it's just gonna permeate throughout the whole video. <laughs> I could just end this entire video right here, but I'm not going to because this game's really damn fun, and I want to talk about it. Not only because of the recent release of the Definitive Edition on Nintendo Switch and Steam, don't worry, they're the same game, but I also started playing it more often in my spare time since the release of the Definitive Edition, and I wanted to talk about it, using the same format I used for 3D All-Stars. Yeah, that's gonna work really well, won't it? If you're familiar with the gameplay of Super Smash Bros., you'll feel right at home with this game. On the surface, it may sound more complicated than Metal Gear Solid, and playing the tutorial may not help, but don't worry. Once you're in battle, and after maybe playing the basic tutorials, it all comes naturally just like Smash Brothers. If you couldn't tell, the game speed and fighting mechanics are based off of Super Smash Brothers Melee, and I know fans will defend this until the year 20XX, but I'm just not a fan of playing the game competitively. I know, gasp. The problem lies within the controls for me. It's so stiff to the point where it becomes a problem, especially when it comes to the advanced tech that fans discovered. And keep in mind, Smash Bros became a competitive game by complete accident, and it was never meant to be played like this in the first place. Rivals takes that formula and not only makes it competitive from the get-go, but in my eyes, it's also easier to get into, competitively or casually. With Super Smash Bros., you have to look up a lot of the advanced mechanics online, including character frame data. That's if you're into the competitive scene. Rivals mitigates the need for an online guide, because the game does a really good job explaining most of the mechanics to you, via an in-game tutorial. I mean, Rivals tells you about directional influence, for crying out loud. A mechanic that makes you live longer in Smash Bros. And how long did it take for Smash Brothers to acknowledge directional influence? It's not a one-to-one -one melee clone. There are some differences between the two games, I do have to stress. Like, for example, you can't grab or throw your opponents for more combos, there's no ledges, and there's no shields. Shocker, isn't it? To replace what was lost, new stuff had to be added, and others needed more prevalence. To replace shields, you use parries, which leaves your opponent vulnerable for a short time if it connects properly. It's almost similar to the perfect shield, except you actually have to push the freaking button instead of releasing your shield. And since there's no ledges to grab onto, every character has a wall jump, which refreshes your recovery if you already used it up against a wall. So, there's plenty of opportunities to get back on stage, even without ledges. Other than that, it hits the same beats as melee. High risk, high reward combat that can get pretty nasty if you're skilled enough. Your hands can also rest easy as there's little to no mashing in Rivals. What do I mean by that? In Smash Bros. if you get buried, fall asleep, or your shield breaks, you'll have to mash the buttons or rotate the control stick quickly to get out of it faster, which gets harder and harder the more damage you have. Unless it's Witch Time or Snooze in the Air, in that case you're kinda screwed. The whole series permeates from this by the way, I'm just using Smash Ultimate for footage because it's easier. In terms of playable fighters, sure it's not much compared to Ultimate 70 to 80 plus fighters, which is, there's more on the way, Christ almighty. But what's here is fantastic. All of them are original characters with two exceptions. Ori and Sign from Ori and the Will of the Wisp, and the titular Shovel Knight. Take a wild guess where he's from. They were both downloadable content along with four other fighters that you originally had to pay for, but the Definitive Edition mitigates that entirely as all fighters are playable right out of the gate, and that's fantastic. If you own the PC version of the game, that roster just grew even more thanks to the Steam Workshop. You can't do this on Nintendo, am I right? The Workshop is pretty much the make it or break it ordeal when it comes to this game, and what will you find on the Workshop? You'll find characters that either fit in alongside the main cast, like Palm, and yeah, I feel like they really should be DLC, ports or remakes of what some fighters may play like in Rivals, two in particular that come to mind really should be Switch exclusive at this point, mean characters, I don't know why they're here, work in progress stuff, which is like the majority of mods on this thing, I don't freaking know why they're here, or you'll find some 100% accurate characters and Ronald McFreakin' Donald. The last two are the shut your brain off and have fun type of characters. I mean, goddamn, the community can get creative and crazy at the same time. I should stress, the base roster is still fantastic, so if you bought the game on Switch, don't feel bad. As we all know, with platform fighters, whether it's Smash Brothers or other games, it's more fun with friends. And there are other modes available to keep you busy in case you can't see your friends due to 2020 being 2020. Like an online mode that is not only fun, but it actually friggin' works. And it gets updated frequently. Unlike... Still bitter about it, mostly because we have to pay for it now. Another multiplayer mode included is Tetherball, which is exclusive to the Definitive Edition. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Still fun either way. Practice mode allows you to train on your own pace. The Abyss mode is just an endless horde battle with a boss fight thrown in every now and again. And the story mode just exists. It shouldn't take you long to finish the story, however. Before you know it, you're just right at the final boss. Finish the story and you get a second custom color slot for all the base roster fighters. Yep you can create your own custom color scheme for the base roster. Personally, I think it's the best part of the game, next to the Steam Workshop support on PC. 
I really think so. You're still able to use these costumes online, but no one will be able to see these costumes but yourself. I also forgot to mention you can use Workshop characters online, but you won't be able to play with Workshop characters unless you and your opponent subscribe to that item on the Steam Workshop, even with strangers, so keep that in mind. There's a lot that'll keep you busy for a while. Whether it's unlocking those little buddies, getting those milestone rewards, messing around with modded buddies like this one, or even creating your own crazy fighter and stages to go alongside with it. This is just bound to keep you busy for a very long time. Especially because all the single player modes are available from the get-go with the Definitive Edition. Yeah, I'm bringing that up again. But that's not all! If you want more Rivals of Aether, there's this free visual novel on Steam called Lovers of Aether. I will explain. This places the Rivals cast in a high school, with the typical looking for a date for the homecoming dance plotline. For an April Fool's joke released last year, it has no business being this polished, and I fully respect the dev team for that. Hell, I'm using a song from Lovers of Ether as we speak. God damn, I love this soundtrack. Even better, there's more on the way. Keep an eye out for this stuff. It's some, some really good stuff, I'll tell you that. If you love Smash Brothers and want a change of pace, hate Ultimate's online system, or hate the later Smash titles because it's not Melee, then play this game. Get it on PC if possible. Specs shouldn't really be a problem as you don't really need a beefy PC to run it. It's also available digitally on the Switch's eShop, with no PS4 release planned as far as we know, and the Xbox One version is as abandoned as the sentence right here. I mean, what Xbox One version? Mod support is non-existent on the Switch, so if mods aren't your cup of tea, then just get it on Switch, or just avoid the workshop. I don't know. I don't know why I'd want to do that, but it's your choice at the end of the day. The game right now costs $30 on Steam and $37 on the eShop. If you think that's too steep, wait for a sale. If not, then go nuts. You won't regret it. Who knows, some up-and-coming Rivals YouTuber might make a dozen young Prodigy videos on their channel. Hey, don't look at me, I'm not the one behind bars. <laughs>